Today, I'm gonna try and build an AI business in just 24 hours to show that it's possible. The first thing I'm gonna do is write up some ideas and sketch them down so that I know what kind of project I'm gonna work on. So my first idea was to create a Chrome extension. It could use AI to maybe do some autocompletes for people when they're writing in text fields. But then I thought a large companies like Grammarly already have this space covered. Another idea I liked was creating a startup that would search through documentation of popular libraries and languages and use AI as a chatbot to be able to give you answers from that documentation. Brainstorming some more, I came up with the idea to use AI for image processing. But large companies like Midjourney already have this covered quite well. Let's Enhance, for example, lets you upscale your images with AI really well. And Adobe have released their recent update, which brings even more AI features to things like Photoshop and Illustrator. With so much competition in the AI space right now, I needed to pivot and change my idea. I'm not crazy. This is what a lot of startup culture is all about. Fail fast and pivot fast. So I remembered one of the best ways to come up with ideas is to try and remember past problems. And here's one I had just a few weeks ago. This right here is the line of code that's stuffing me up. You see, I was doing this tutorial on FreeCodeCamp and I had gotten stuck during the video, which was like eight hours long. And I thought there must be a better way to do this. And I came up with an idea. The problem I'm having is if I'm searching for something specific in a long video, I wanna download the transcript of that video and then search through that transcript and see if I can find the answer in there. And so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna see if I can use the YouTube API to download the transcript and then see if I can plug that into a database that a chat GPT can use and then find the answer for me. I had already been looking at the YouTube captions API, but I was having some problems where I couldn't really download it. So I decided to do some Googling to see if I could fix this. If I have a look, I think the script is right there. And the problem right now I'm having is that it needs the API key. So, so I don't think this address works. Back then I gave up on this idea, but now I'm thinking, what if I took another look? What if I connect directly to the YouTube API and connect that directly to ChatGPT? So I gave it another try. I headed over to Google and loaded up the YouTube data API. The first step is to see if I can download a YouTube transcript. And while searching for content or uploading it is quite simple. Properly finding the caption section and downloading a transcript wasn't as easy. However, eventually I found a section that covers it. It wasn't going to be simple though. I needed to load up the VS Code and start writing some functions for it. There were quite a few different options to try out. And I tested out at this one called YouTube Caption Scraper, which came up with this simple function. But it didn't work. Every time I tried to run it, I had some kind of errors pop up. And I decided that maybe this is too complicated to solve and it's time to try out a new library. I came across YouTube transcripts. This was the syntax. Additionally, it actually worked. I got a full list of the transcript with timestamps and durations. Feeling pretty excited, I think yes. I'm actually going to be able to make this idea happen. I wanted to connect this up to OpenAI. I jumped into their documentation for GPT and had a look at their new chat GPT API. I wanted to copy out this function just over here and test it out in my own code. I've got my API key here. Please don't copy it. I'll delete this later. But I created a file called comments.js that pulled out the captions for our YouTube video. This didn't look very pretty, so I beautified it so I could take a closer look. Here it is. But this wouldn't go into ChatGPT. So I merged all the text together into a file called merge.txt. It doesn't look that great, but ChatGPT could use this as part of the transcript. Then I plug this all into a prompt with a specific question called, what is this video about? I crossed my fingers, I opened up console, I ran node and waited for the response. And ChatGPT answered my question. It answered it accurately. So I wanted to test just what kind of questions I could ask. I asked questions like, what's the biggest takeaway from this video as a web designer? As well as what might be missing from this video? ChatGPT replied that while the transcript is great, the visuals are kind of missing. I'm sorry, ChatGPT. Next time I'll try to pass those through. I've got most of this idea working now. Well, the individual parts, which is usually the most important thing when building a project. I can download transcripts from YouTube. I can then plug those transcripts into ChatGPT and communicate with ChatGPT about the video itself. I'd love to be able to get access to DALI 3 where I could even give it screenshots of the video to maybe communicate even more, but I don't have access to that API just now. The next thing I wanna do is plug this all into a database so I can store and communicate with it a little bit better. I'm gonna be using a vector database because that is what is best now, especially when you're trying to use large language models. 
So I'm going to be using AstraDB because they've recently introduced vector databases as part of their database suite. It was a lunchtime, so I thought I would use this time to take a look at how AstraDB actually works. There was this great video by Anya. It was kind of a crash course on using AstraDB with vector databases. I'll link it in the description below because it was useful enough for me to feel comfortable to create my own Astra database and get started with this idea. I headed to data stacks. Here I went to create a new free account and create a new database. On the dashboard, there was already an option waiting to create a vector search database so I selected to create that. For the database name I called it YouTube transcripts and then I filled out some other basic information such as the provider being on Google Cloud as well as the region being US West. I created the database and now I'm ready to test it out but I've got one problem. Now I'm up to the hard part of this project. So I'm getting to this point where I need to build this but putting it all together and interconnecting all the files sometimes can get complicated. I'm looking for a template or something to get me started and I found the perfect boilerplate. It was made by none other than AstraDB themselves and it comes with a JSON API with Mongoose set up and the database connected and it works pretty much the same as my system except with movies and then you can talk to ChatGPT about those movies. So I'm going to see if I can pull that out and use YouTube transcripts instead and see if all that connects together. It was time to do some refactoring. What I decided to do was merge the two projects together, my local project and this template file. Then I created very good semantic naming for each one of my functions and had them placed in an individual file so that each function had one specific job and I could link them all together. I created this model here in Mongoose for videos. It would collect the title, description, URL, the transcript, as well as the vector that I would get later from OpenAI. The next thing I needed to do was collect the URL and the individual unique ID for that URL from a video. So I had a script that would pull out the ID from the V value that gets passed in the header. Tested whether this was saving in my database and it wasn't. I kept getting this error with an empty array. This was because the original template was actually dropping the collection, which wasn't useful for me. I needed that collection to stay in there even when I reran the app. So I commented out this line, tested it again, and now the actual videos were being placed in the database and I was storing and being able to retrieve all the information I needed, like the URL, title, description, and transcript. What's cool is that I could actually call collect up way more information than I needed. I actually could pull out all the related videos, all the thumbnails, what length the video is, what other kind of thumbnail sizes there are, and much, much more. But I really didn't need to store that much. I only needed to store the basics, which were these right over here, as well as the embedding, which I actually generated from OpenAI. And now this project is almost ready to use. I just need a nice web user interface on a website that I can actually communicate here with this backend. And here it is. It's a nice and simple interface, but I'll show you how it works. It pulls a YouTube URL and grabs all the detail, populating it in the AstraDB database. Then the transcript asks one question. What's this video about to get you started? This one here is about Next.js and Vercel, but then I can ask ask additional questions, like what would I learn by watching this video? And does this video give me a tutorial on how to deploy a Next.js project? In this case, no, it doesn't. So yes, I've kind of got this working. Let me try with one more video. I'll try this one from Fireship. I always like his content. Here is one he made about why big projects are ditching TypeScript. Instead of watching the video, I'll just ask ChatGPT to tell me. And here it tells me it's because it's just too hard. So how's this all working? I put together an index.html file. It was some simple front-end code. I used Tailwind CSS for the user interface, and then I used some JavaScript to essentially render out different types of UI based on messages from the backend. The messages I get from ChatGPT, I would loop through here and print out HTML content, almost like React. The backend was quite simple. I just grabbed the URL address of the video, as well as the messages passed from the client. These would be sent to AstraDB as well as ChatGPT. Then I would pass this information back to the front end, and the front end would update its state based on the data that was sent. The end result is a project that's working exactly how I intended. I can now plug URLs in. Anything new will get saved in the database on AstraDB and a vector will be created. Anything existing will be pulled across and now I can chat with ChatGPT based on the transcript of the video. And this is pretty cool. Though there are some limitations, such as if the video is a few hours long, I might not be able to fit the entire transcript into a ChatGPT message. And this 
is where I think it'd be useful to split the actual transcript into small sections and then save those in AstroDB and pull out the only sections that you need based on the question that the user asks. This is as much as I can do in 24 hours, but it's an MVP that's working. If you guys want to check this project out, I'm going to link it in the description below. And I'd like to thank AstroDB for sponsoring today's video. They make videos like this happen on the channel and I've linked them in the description below as well.